Okay guys, welcome back. So today we are going to be taking a look at our second example for undetermined coefficients. So we have this differential equation right here. And the first thing that we do is we recognize that it is non-homogeneous. But the first step is always to find the homogeneous solution. So we are going to take y double prime minus 4y prime plus 13y equals 0, homogeneous. And first we are going to solve this. So here we have a constant coefficient case. So let's go straight into the characteristic equation, r squared minus 4r plus 13 equals 0. Does this factor? Nope. So let's go ahead and use quadratic formula. 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 4 times 13, which is 52, and then all divided by 2. And that's going to give us our r1 and r2. And this comes out to be 4 plus or minus 3 times i, because we have 16 minus 52, which is negative 36. Square root of negative 36 is 6 times i, and then we divide everything by 2. So if this is our roots, we can go straight into our answer. So our homogeneous solution is going to be e to the 4t. Remember, we always take the real part first and multiply everything by. And then we got c1 cosine of our of this coefficient in front of the i, so 3t plus c2 sine of 3t. So we can go straight into that answer. And we have this as our homogeneous solution. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to step two, which is determining the particular solution form. So let's go ahead and start with the right-hand side of the equation, sine of 2t, and let's just keep on differentiating it. So we have sine 2t, then we get 2 cosine 2t, and then we get negative 4 sine 2t, and then this pattern just repeats and changes between sine, cosine, sine, and cosine. So if we are going to represent every single possibility in this list right here, we can do that by just representing as a, some undetermined coefficient, times cosine of 2t, plus b times sine of 2t. And we see that this form right here can represent any possible term that shows up in this list, because all we have are sines and cosines of 2t, and then plus some coefficient. But that is taken care of by these undetermined coefficients. So this is the particular solution that we want to assume, but we're not done there. Remember what I said, we have to make sure that the terms in this particular solution form are linearly independent from the terms in this homogeneous form. And we see that a cosine 2t is linearly independent with e to the 4t times cosine 3t, and it's also linearly independent with e to the 4t times sine 3t. So we're good right there. Now we have to check b sine of 2t. So we check this with both of these homogeneous solutions. So we have e to the 4t cosine 3t is linearly independent with b sine 2t. Okay, we're good there. And then also e to the 4t times c2 sine 3t is also linearly independent with this guy right here. So all of these terms in our particular solution are linearly independent with all of the terms in the homogeneous solution. So we are okay and we can safely assume this form. So let's go ahead and move on to step three, which is actually determining the undetermined coefficients. So we have our differential equation, and we are going to be solving the non-homogeneous part. So let's go ahead and differentiate yp twice and then throw it back into this different equation. So I'm gonna write it out here. So yp prime is equal to negative 2a sine 2t, plus 2b cosine of 2t. And then we can differentiate this again. And what we get is negative 4a cosine 2t minus 4b sine of 2t. And then we'll take these three guys and throw them back into our different equation. So yp double prime is negative 4a cosine 2t minus 4b sine 2t and then minus four times yp prime, so we get a plus eight a sine 2t, and then a minus eight b cosine 2t. And then we have plus a 13 yp, which is going to be 13 a cosine 2t plus 13 b sine 2t. And all this has to sum to sine of 2t. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our cosines and sines together and rewrite it. So for the cosines, I have a negative 4a minus an 8b plus a 13a 
cosine 2t. And then for the sines, let's go ahead and get those together. We have a minus 4b plus 8 times a, and then plus 13b. And that is for sine 2t. And all this equals sine 2t. Okay, so from this, we have two equations and two unknowns. The first thing that we have is the coefficient in front of the sine on the left-hand side has to equal the coefficient in front of the sine on the right-hand side. And also the coefficient on the cosine on the left-hand side has to equal the coefficient on the cosine on the right-hand side. So we have this has to equal zero and then this has to equal one. So the cosine equation comes out to be 9a minus 8b equals zero. And then this sine equation comes out to be 9b plus 8a is equal to one. So from this equation, we get a is equal to eight over nine times b. And if we substitute this into here, we get 9b plus 64 over nine b is equal to one, which gives us 145 over nine b is equal to one. So b is equal to nine for 145. So a comes out to be eight over 145. And really that's all there is to it. We have officially determined our undetermined coefficients up here. So we can now assemble the entire general form of the solution. So y, the general form of our solution, is equal to the homogeneous plus the particular, which is equal to e to the 4t times c1 cosine 3t plus c2 sine of 3t. So that is the homogeneous part. And then plus the particular part, we assumed this form right here, and we have a and b now. So plus 8 over 145 cosine of 2t, and then plus 9 over 145 times sine 2t. So this is our final solution, our general solution to this non-homogeneous differential equation. So thanks for watching, and next time we will take a look at yet another example using the method of undetermined coefficients.